Welcome back to Online Darts, everyone. Here we are. It's a very special one. I'm looking forward to this. We've got the three-time champion of the world, Wolfie Martin Adams. Ryan, first of all, how are you? I'm very well at the moment, yes. Yeah. Enjoying playing some competitive darts again? Has it got the juices flowing? Yes, it has. I mean, I haven't done this since... Uh, well, I did that a bit in the summer, you know, August, April to August. And, you know, since August, all I've done is the, uh, the WDF's Virtual Cup, which was reasonably interesting, but it, the setup was so different. I mean, the the setup evolved, you know, with yeah. Modus. It, it evolved as we went through, and it was really good to be part of that. And it was really enjoyed playing, um, you know. And now, you know, it, there's been a big break, and now it's come around again. And it's great to be back playing competitive darts. From a man that's played in the pub to played in the county, to the lakeside stage, won the biggest of them all, <laughs> and now playing online and now in this. Did you ever see ever see yourself playing in things like this a few years ago? No, I didn't. No, far from it. I mean, you, you were just constantly looking at the calendar and you know different tournaments that were there, what, what opportunities around with exhibitions, doing trade shows, the personal appearances, all that sort of stuff. Um, but I'm, I'm at a point now where I hope what we're doing now is successful and it keeps going because, yeah, travelling tires you. So it'd be nice to do this sort of thing um, on a more permanent basis than uh, the actual travelling around doing the tournaments. But, uh, don't get me wrong, I still want to do some of the tournaments. You know, the Dutch Open, for instance, you know, it is a great event. The British Open, it's a historic event. I'd love to be able to keep playing in those. So, you know, but, you know, we'll see what comes up and it all depends on how COVID treats us and lets us do things. I was going to say, we obviously we put loads of stuff online and one of the biggest questions we get is, will we see Martin Adams on a TV stage again? That you, I'm, Just from this, we see you love the sport. You're never going to retire and walk away from it, are you, until you physically can't throw anymore? Oh, no, definitely not walking away, no. I mean, yeah, you may see me on television. I, I don't know. It all depends on how things go. I mean, through the virtual cup, I'm pleased to say, I've, I've got a spot. You know, I've got qualified for the World Masters, uh, the WDF's uh, new World Masters. Um, yeah, we're hoping that that can take place, but you know, COVID permitting. Yeah, that's the that's the thing these days, isn't it? Everything is COVID permitting. Yeah. So I mean, you know, our government that tells us, you know, this is uh, we're not ever going backward, but they can't give that hundred percent because you never know what's around the corner with COVID. Hopefully, the vaccinations will, you know, get rid of the risks of uh, being hospitalised and stuff like that. I mean, that's been the biggest pressure yeah. is on the NHS. Um, the, when you look at the figures, and I mean, I look at them every day. I go on the BBC website, I look at the figures every day. If if they're not up to date very quick, then I'll go on the government one. And some of the figures as we've gone through this have been oh, awful, awful. You yeah. Know? And I feel so sorry for so many people that have lost loved ones. And, but you've got to give big, big thanks to the people that have been looking after us in the NHS. Yeah, definitely. And this year, obviously... There's no more BDO. I'll ask you about that in a minute. But, the, right. <laughs> but the, the, the most common question that I got personally from January until February time is, will Martin Adams go to Q School? Because your fan base that I've noticed is unbelievable. And they were like, will he just go and give it one go? Did, did the thought ever cross your mind to, to enter it this year and, and have one bash at it? No, no, it didn't. And I'll tell you for why. The main reason is it's the, the gruelling circuit and tour that, that is, uh, is on. You know, if you get your tour card, that, that circuit seems to be very gruelling. And at 64 years of our age, I really don't think that the body would actually handle it. You know, So, no, it, it, definitely not for me, no. No, it was just, honestly, I was asked <laughs> numerous times a day in the lead-up to it. It was, oh, will, it, will he go and just give it one go? Because no. everyone would love to see you just one more yeah. time. No, I'm sorry to disappoint people, but it, it's going to be a non-starter for me because I just, if, if it did happen to get a tour card, I just don't think I could stand the pace. The pace of it. I mean, you travel here, there and everywhere. Oh, you know, agreed. Week in, week out and so forth. No, you're living out of a suitcase. I mean, uh, 64, I couldn't knack it. I really couldn't knack it. So. <laughs> No, it was just interesting because I say the, the fan base that you have is truly unbelievable. Everyone yeah. always asks what's he doing when when you weren't playing and everything like that. So it was just an interesting conundrum that that sort of like came up. Yeah, I mean at the height of things, you know, you you, you could 
but you work it all out and you were away from home so like eight, nine months of the year. You know, living out of suitcases, in and out of hotels. Um, you know, depending on what you were doing, where you were doing your exhibition stuff. I mean, you know, there was a, a time there where in Holland, you know, we were out there all the time. Yeah. Out there all the time and you're just living out of suitcase and going home, do the washing, repack it, go back away, go back out there again. Um, I was a lot younger then. Yeah. Um, my body wouldn't take it. I mean, these days, I mean, I've, I struggle with my calves walking. <laughs> Maybe it's because I don't do enough walking, I don't know. Um, I've got uh, arthritis in my shoulder. My osteopath has always, to always told me that I will get arthritis in my neck, and I think it's on the way. Um, there's a few clicks in the left-hand shoulder now as well. Um, sometimes when I'm playing, you get it in the, uh, you get some real sharp yeah. pains in the elbow joints. And, yeah. And that, so, you know, the, the bones are creaking, so it's time to look after the bones and do what you can, when you can. Yeah, no, I, I, I have to respect <laughs> that. Just touching on some of the, the PDC stuff, obviously we know that you were the proudest England captain going, but what was it like when you finally accepted that invitation to go and play in the Grand Slam at Wolverhampton as a, a BDO player? Because I remember the reception you got, and, and I still look back at the pictures now in the old games, it looked like you loved every single minute of that up there. I did, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, there was a lot of, I mean, at that time I was, you know, looking at Twitter and so forth, and there was a lot of... Uh, yeah, you're going to get it and all this sort of stuff. And I was being told things from Facebook and all that, you know, and how the crowd were going to be totally against me. And I thought, well, there's only one way to deal with it. Treat it like a massive exhibition. Because you don't expect exhibition nights to be quiet. You expect people to be, you know, giving you some yeah. some verbal as you, as you play. And, so, and that's all part of the fun. So treat it like a big exhibition, have the fun and enjoy. And that's what happened. And I did enjoy it. Did you regret not accepting the invitation a few years before when you turned it down? No, not really, because um, <clears throat> I was I was told by someone very high up in the PDC that I had a misplaced loyalty, but I don't think I did. Uh, my loyalty was to the BDO, uh, and, and all the unpaid people that had given me advice and guidance over the years, I had a loyalty to them. They helped me get where I got to, yeah. and I wasn't going to turn me back on them. Plus the England captaincy as well, playing for England. If I got the PDC, I wouldn't be able to do that. So... I mean, you know, it's just my decision was, no, I'm not doing it. So, oh, yeah, no, And no. I don't regret those decisions at all. But, you know, when it came down to the one that I did do, I did take the time, I phoned the BDO and said, do you want me to play? I said, if you don't want me to play, I won't. And they said, yes, please, Martin, we would like you to play. And there we go. We accepted it and we had a fun, we had a fun time. Just touching on your loyalty to the BDO there, and everyone knows how much it meant to you, but the way it's ended... Is that a very sour note for yourself? No, not so much a sour note. It's a very sad note. Um, I mean, my loyalty was not just to the BDO as the organisation, but very much to Ollie Croft. Uh, and unfortunately, Ollie, you know, he was wasn't in the greatest of health in his last two or three years of his life. Um, but uh, the people that the last one, it was more the last one that took over. It just I don't know what possesses a chairman of an organisation to walk away from over three hundred grand worth of prize money is. Just beyond my belief, and I, I just can't see why. Um, I did speak to Mr. Potter about it, the owner of the Lakeside, and his comment was, I cannot negotiate with that man, which is quite a sad statement for, in many ways for, for the BDO's, from the BDO's perspective. Um, what the discussions were, I've got no idea, uh, and I think at the moment, I don't, well, now I don't really want to know what the, what the problems were. It's gone. It's dead, it's buried, and I think we buried it with Ollie Croft. Was that the final now when Des took it away from Lakeside? Because it had been synonymous. That was the, the venue that we all look back and we've enjoyed years and years of history. Although it was at Jolly's first, everyone remembers the epic Lakeside finals. And, and when it left there, was there was no way back. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it, it, was an, it became an iconic venue. You know, people would uh, book their their tickets as soon as they became available. Um, they would book their hotel rooms every year and they would save up the whole year so they could spend the whole week there. Um, yeah, I mean, moving it to um, the O2, I think was just a major, major mistake. Uh, it was not a venue that's necessarily easy to get to. Whereas the lakeside, you drive down there, you pull up in the car park, you lock your car, you walk in the venue and have a great night. O2's not like that. When 
Des resigned after the catastrophe of the O2. A man that's seen a lot in darts. Were you absolutely gobsmacked, amazed? There's a whole list of words I could use that he was then re-voted back in as chairman months later. I couldn't believe what I was reading. Could not believe what I was reading. I thought there's a man you have got there that is effectively driving the company into the ground. Well, that's the way it seemed. Don't know the full facts. Don't know the full figures. Not sure I want to know, but to vote him back in again, unbelievable. I mean, one of the, the biggest errors was at the World Masters, uh, where there was a redraw, which is totally against the rules of the World Masters. It is a World Darts Federation event. It's totally against the rules of the World Masters, and it was redrawn. And in many ways, it was the first nail in the coffin. Looking at brighter times, the BDO is dead, as you've said. I think that everyone agrees with that. But the fact that we've now got the WDF in place looking at doing, obviously, the Masters again, the World Championships. Mm -hmm. We've got Steve Brand doing the MAD events as well. I know yeah. that you've had some contact about that. Are you pleased to see that the amateur game is now in much better hands and it's looking to go forward again? Yeah, well, yes, I am, because it, there's people putting in time and effort uh, and making it and trying to make things work. Uh, I've got a lot of faith in the, in the World Darts Federation uh, and the personalities that are involved in it, and I think they will take it forward. There's one thing I, I think with, with every sport, and, and with darts in particular, there's an evolution, and darts evolves, and darts has evolved. Um, it, like any evolution, it upsets people along the way. And um, Yeah, years gone by, you go back to 93, yeah, it upset a lot of people. But it was part of the first part of the evolution of darts. And even if you go back even further than that, National Dart Association of Great Britain, Ollie Croft created the British Darts Organisation. That was evolution. And that upset all the people in the NDGBA. So, yes, things do evolve. Yes, it upsets people as the evolution goes forward. And this is just another step forward. The British Darts Organisation is gone. So, you know, you've got everything that's going with, you know, the World Darts Federation, we've got that. Mad, starting up, um, it, it's part of the evolution, and I'm sure the PDC's evolution won't stop either. The Barry will still keep pushing that forward, and uh, making the, the subtle changes. I presume in the short term, but maybe in the long term, he's got more bigger changes to come here. Who knows what Barry's thinking? I don't think anyone knows what Barry's no, thinking. But there you, go. <laughs> I mean, you, you have to accept evolution. It, it upsets people along the way, but that's the way it is. For a man that's seen everything and now the space darts is in, did you ever think it would get to where it is now that it's viewed by millions and millions of people all around the world and players like yourself have become icons and stars of a sport? Well, no, because I, I never went into it thinking that. Um, I, I, don't think, I don't know of many, any players, really, that have, have thought about that, really. Um, you know, it just, things happen. If you're good at what you do in a sport, and you can climb up that lane, you can get yourself to that, that top end, and you can win the, the titles that really matter, um, then, yeah, you're going to be successful and you're going to be remembered for those. You know, I'm pleased that I managed to get the three on the spin in the World Masters, equaling what Bob Anderson had done. Um, you know, for me, it was fantastic. We've seen you on these streams at 64 years young, <laughs> hitting nine darters. We've seen multiple 100-plus averages. With, with potentially what's coming up the rest of this year and into next year with the new windmill, well, well, the WDF World Masters, the MAD have obviously got world champions. Could we see one big title left in Martin Adams? Well, I've always thought there's still one in there, you know, yearning to get out. Um, but whether it will or not, I don't know. You know, it, I manage the, the arthritis in my shoulder. Uh, some days I think that I'm not managing it very well. Um, but you know, if you get if you get that side of things right, then there's no reason why not. Um, yeah, it can be. Darts can be painful to the body as we get older. Just look at the amateur <coughs> side of it. Just touching on what you said there. What we've seen here, we haven't seen many of the amateurs hit the averages that, that you're hitting. Now, with all your experience going into that Masters in Holland, how much adrenaline would be pumping through your veins? And if and if it did, and if it did happen, where would that rank? Obviously, the first ones are always special, but to yeah. do it after all this time, surely would be even more special. Well, it would be, yeah. I, th I think so, anyway. I mean, I I've always had a, a love of certain certain titles that I've achieved along the way. Yeah, things like the, the first World Cup singles champion in '95 in Switzerland, 
um, your first World Championship at the Lakeside, your first World Masters, they're, they're always precious to you. Um, but yeah, sometimes, you know, when you've, there's been a bit of a gap, um, then yeah, that would become quite special to actually think, yeah, Oh, the old fella's still got it. <laughs> Martin, it's an absolute pleasure sitting there. I could talk to you for hours, mate. Thank oh, you thank very you. much for your time, mate. It's really fascinating, mate, as always. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.